place to be tonight, Philadelphia. Kevin Durso will have the best seat in the house in the Flyers press box, getting you ready for Flyers and Penguins. And, Kevin, uh, you tweeted this out the other day about why this game automatic, uh, all of a sudden became a lot bigger because of some other games around the Flyers. You know, this game becomes pretty big tonight. Yeah, Pittsburgh's holding that final wild card spot right now. So this is a direct matchup against the team you're chasing for a playoff spot. Six points separate the two teams. A win in regulation cuts the deficit to four. They still have two games against Pittsburgh after tonight for the rest of the regular season. So it's a great preview of a lot of things to come. Obviously, a few weeks down the road, we're going to have the stadium series, and it's going to be an exciting outdoor game. But for right now, the focus has to be on the one that's indoors and going after two big points tonight in the standings. Yeah, so and keep in mind, the trade deadline in the NHL is still a couple of, you know, it's down to, what, 22nd, is it? Uh, it's the 25th, two weeks from today. 25th, two weeks from today. So there's still some interesting, like Chuck Fletcher's in a weird spot right now, don't you think? He definitely is because you have to weigh what the standings are telling you, which is you've got a team that's not in the playoff picture right now, which normally is an indicator that you're going to be a seller. But you have a team that's also on the rise that's won 10 of the last 12, has points in 10 straight, and has made a lot of noise. And people are taking notice. So you kind of have to weigh the two sides. Do you want to try to go for the playoff spot or do you want to be the seller who set yourself up nicely for next year? And it's, it's a fine line for Chuck Fletcher to walk. He's done – a pretty good job of it so far because he's been really just shedding some dead weight that isn't going to be around beyond this season anyway. But it, it's going to get interesting when it comes time for a decision like Wayne Simmons, who for the next two weeks may be a flyer, but beyond that, it's really hard to tell. So, Ke- uh, you, you, Kevin, what side of the line do you think he's on? We want to make the playoffs or we'd rather sit and kind of uh, let it play out? Well, he said that he doesn't want to change the philosophy here, what the plan was, even with the recent run. And maybe that's because things can change so quickly. You know, it's too difficult to bank on the team continuing to play this well and put together streaks like they like they just had. You go on an eight-game winning streak, you've won 10 of 12, points in 10 straight. It's too difficult to bank on that for the entirety of the rest of the season here. So you're probably going to lean more towards trying to set yourself up and not do anything that is too drastic that puts you out of a position to be good the following season and leave the spots open that you need to. He made a pretty interesting trade on Saturday by getting Dale Weiss to a team that was going to take on the contract. He traded him to Montreal, threw in Christian Folan as well, and got back two players who are just depth guys who may not play a game this season with the Flyers itself, but it opened this roster spot up for Phil Myers to come up, and that's a prospect that's gotten a lot of buzz and is somebody who should get into a game here sometime soon, probably by the end of this week for sure. Tomorrow's a possibility as well with the back-to-back. So it opens the door for prospects, and maybe that's the right way to go is to just leave yourself the possibility to open the door for any prospect. It's kind of hard to argue with the results you've gotten from opening the door for one particular prospect in Carter Hart. Kevin, you know, th- th- that's fine that that could be the philosophy or the strategy from the front office perspective to be sellers or at the very least play it a little bit safe and you know set yourself up like you said for the future for next year and years to come but what's the vibe around the team and particularly in the locker room i mean this team is on a run as we said and ever since the insertion of carter hart there's just a different feel with this team with the city and you know their their focus with this team so there's there's a lot of positive things going on and they're not that far out of reach from the playoffs So what's the vibe like with the players? I think the vibe with the players is the same as it is with the fans to a sense. And I got asked recently enough, you know, the Flyers were playing Winnipeg a couple weeks back. And, it's you know, Winnipeg's one of the top teams in Western Conference. And the question was, do they have a shot? You know, and and I've come to learn that the answer is anytime Carter Hart's starting a game, they've got a shot because he's been that good for them. So the vibe in the locker room is the same way. You put this kid in goal. You've got a shot, and they've been playing like that in front of them. They have, they've had some lapses in the last couple of games that are a little dangerous. You don't want to fall into habits, but they've played generally over the last 12 games. They've played really strong hockey, and that's what's gotten them back into this position. So the vibe from the players is to not worry about all the outside noise. It's don't listen to anything about what the trade strategy may be at the deadline and anything like that. It's go focus on the task at hand. They're six points out of a playoff spot. They certainly think – you know, let's put it this way. Claude Giroux was saying that he thought that they had a run in them at the All Star break. That was when the winning streak was only three games old. And at the time, it kind of was an afterthought. Now they're six points out of a playoff spot. It doesn't look like so much of an afterthought anymore. 
He just said it, by the way. Kevin Durso, 97.3 ESPN.com. Flyers and Penguins tonight. Listen to the game on 97.3. I said before you came on, Kevin, there's a reason why the Flyers might give us just as entertaining as a run as the Sixers, and you just said it. Anytime Carter Hart is in goal, they finally feel like they have a guy Mm -hmm. that can steal a series because he's the best player on the ice. Typically, to win the series, you would have to have the better goalie, and they never did. Now, they not only have the better team, but the best guy in net, and that allows them to maybe steal some series because they have a guy that anytime he's on the ice, he's the best player. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, uh, you harken back to some of the series. Uh, look at last year's playoff series against Pittsburgh. Better goaltending maybe changes the whole outlook of that. Yes, Pittsburgh has a ton of offensive firepower. Crosby, Malkin, Kessel, we all know the names by now. But you go beyond that and you go, you know, they were leading game six down a game, you know, a must win to extend the series to a game seven. They're leading that game four to two. And you wonder if you get just one big save, maybe that keeps the game in your favor, the momentum doesn't shift, and you win that game and go to Pittsburgh, and game seven is who knows what happens. So to have that guy back there now that they can trust to make that big save, and, and let's face it, he's, I, I always knew coming in, especially from watching just some of, some of his games when he played in World Juniors, that Carter Hart had the fundamentals, that he was positionally sound, he could track the puck well and everything like that. But to watch him make some of the saves last Mondays against Vancouver comes to mind, the diving save on the power play late in a one-goal game, you're, you're looking at that and you're going, how on earth does he make a save like that? And he's not necessarily going to be that highlight real guy because he's so good positionally, but he's capable of doing that too. And, and he's, he probably stole you the game against Vancouver. He's stolen you a game against Boston. He's stolen you a handful of others out there as well at this point. So the fact that you've got that guy in, back there now, it, the one thing that seems to have been missing for the, last, for the better part of the last two decades is finally in place, and the rest of it just has to fall into place. And they've got, you know, I think we always knew that this was a good roster on paper. It's finally starting to all come together in the right way. The young defensemen are starting to play a lot better. You've got the forwards who are fitting into a good rotation, and it's all finally starting to come together, and that's what's got the Flyers on this run. Kevin Derso at the Wells Fargo Center tonight. Flyers and Penguins. Carter Hart tonight. They'll play tomorrow night against uh, Minnesota on the road and then back-to-backs against Detroit this weekend. We'll have both those Detroit games for you live on 97.3 ESPN. Tomorrow night, Minnesota will be over on our sister station, 1041 FM, 1450 AM, as the Flyers have uh, got themselves back in the race, thanks to uh, Carter Hart. And, uh, you know, the team is just overall. JVR has been playing better. They've got mm-hmm. healthy. We'll see what happens. Kevin, we'll, uh, we'll check you out later, pal. Thanks, guys.